Well, hi, Tony. Uh, hello, Ben. How you doing? Uh, I, I feel distant. Do you? <laughs> yeah. I feel a little distant, too. What, at least six to eight feet? Well, the table's eight feet long. Okay, then uh, we're, we're following protocol. We yeah. are following. You're part of my little bubble, we're my social following bubble. following protocol. Yeah, he's part of my social bubble, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Well, greetings, family. It is Thursday, July 23rd, and we're trying something a little bit new with the Pastor Cast. And uh, I am here with Tony, and we are going to be uh, having a conversation. And, and really, uh, the way that we're doing this uh, is, is really due to two things. First of all, I'm sure, Tony, you're just super tired of staring into a camera yes. all the time. And, uh, and secondly, the nature uh, really of the, the application points from this series is yeah. something that is very, uh, it, it, it it's more lends itself to a conversation than just straight dictation onto a camera. Is that okay. about right? Yeah, better than monologue, I think, on some of these points, yeah. That sounds great. Okay, well, you know, one of the things uh, just to get us all started is talk about any updates that are going on here at GBC. Well, I mean, as far as the, uh, the, the shelter, you know, and... Yeah. Uh, COVID-19 health uh, order, orders and stuff like that. There's no changes. So at this point, we'll be still live streaming on Sunday. However, we, we are looking into uh, opportunities for maybe doing some sort of outside, outdoor gathering. It wouldn't replace Sunday morning because too many people are, are dependent on the streaming. Yeah. But maybe we can add something that would allow us to have some of us gather outdoors and and, uh, and sing and worship and, and hear a bit of the word and pray together. So we're working on that. So no other updates other than that. As far as uh, just kind of even personal updates, I mean, how are you doing? How's your family? Well, thank you. Yeah, Ben. Uh, I mean, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a daily thing, and we've talked before about the need to maintain a, a deep well uh, with the Lord, so so that every day we can have the grace we need to to make it through the day. And you know, I've I've shared with the church about my mom and dad and their their conditions. My mom's much better uh, as far as shingles. I think she's passed that, but she did end up, I think, a little bit of nerve problems so mm -hmm. she's working on that some pain in her sciatica okay. and my dad just keeps decreasing yeah mm -hmm. it's a kind of a, a steady decline and uh, with his Alzheimer's and he's having some blood pressure problems so that mm -hmm. accentuates us on on some days appreciate everyone's prayers and at this point we're just we're just persevering enduring and looking yeah. for the Lord's grace and, and loving one another yeah. uh, in the household how about yourself bro I mean you've, you've shared with the church on and off about your mom's condition. Well, uh, thank you, Tony. As, as many of you know, my mom was diagnosed with a uh, cancer of the bile duct. Um, she's gone through most of the treatments that are available, uh, and then she's also gone through some experimental treatments. Those have come to an end. Uh, she is now um, basically making a decision to go with a more aggressive form of the chemotherapy to extend some of her life and also maybe open up a window for a particular trial medicine. One of the great things, Ben, I mean, is just hearing lately what we've heard about the answered prayers to a lot of our folks who have been suffering from various uh, you know, health conditions. And, yeah. and God's done a lot to encourage all of us, I think, that we should remember each other during this time. Yeah. Keep lifting each other up and, and yeah. praying for one another. Yeah. Uh, one of the reasons we wanted to do this pastor cast was to help us, you know, both apply the word yeah. to ourselves, especially when we're not in a, in a situation where we can do that on a on a on a, on a real um, regular basis. I mean, mm -hmm. we obviously can watch the watch uh, the sermon on Sundays, and we can participate via Zoom with our community groups and stuff like that. But yeah. a lot of folks might have some questions about, you know, various application points yeah. for the message. Very early on, you had mentioned that you you know that that a lot of this social upheaval that's been going on is very troubling and 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 also um you had had some application points for us especially in regards to this basket that we talked about of social justice mm -hmm. um so i was hoping that maybe you could uh, unpack that a little bit more for us so that we can you know how do we apply the word as as a covenant people of god mm -hmm. to to this to all what we see around us you're right there's a lot of uh, of, of feelings associated with this. And uh, I mentioned that it's really disheartening to see what's happening, you know, with our society and part of our culture and, and also the, the church and how it relates to it, how it interacts with what's going on mm -hmm. in, in the culture. 
Uh, I don't necessarily want to go back over identity because that was one of the things I mentioned was under the umbrella or in this basket, which yeah. gets labeled social justice. Uh, but uh, I think one of the points that I'd, I would want to work out a little bit more is to is to say, Ben, that, that social justice is is a term that's used and it's it's it's, you know, thrown around left and right. And people need to define that when they use it, I think, because. It means different things to different people. It has meant different things historically, yeah. and there's different things associated with it. And and when you when you use something like that, uh, you think you may be communicating, and you may not. You may not be being understood, or you are not understanding someone else. Sometimes it's used to sort of beat people up because mm -hmm. if if you if you label something social justice, I mean, who doesn't want to be for justice? So if you are going to disagree when you really just disagree with a point, but it sounds like you don't care about justice. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing is we really would need to define what is meant by social justice as the terms being used in various contexts. Mm -hmm. Biblical justice yeah, God's concerned with justice, but biblical justice primarily has to do with the covenant community. You mentioned that. How do we as a covenant community? Because God directly addresses the church, right, mm -hmm. and how we ought to behave with one another. Uh, there's less direct sort of statements in terms of how we relate to culture on, on specific things. So I, I would start there. We, I think we need to define what we mean by that and understand that there are different things in this basket. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, so for example, if I, you put in there things like poverty, or homelessness, mm -hmm. or sex trafficking, you put that all in the basket of, uh, that you label social justice. I think every Christian would say all those things concern me, mm -hmm. you know, and I should, as salt and light, uh, you know, seek to bring something to bear upon it—the truth of God. How can I? How can I get involved with that? But today. Today, in the same basket labeled social justice, there are other issues that are put in there, and they're they're conjoined. You know, they're mm -hmm. they're linked in the mind of many. Yeah. Maybe not every Christian, but they're linked in the mind of people as they're as they're using it. Uh, you know, in society, mm -hmm. uh, you could probably guess what kind of some other things are in there. Yeah. Uh, well, like Black Lives Matter, for example, one yeah. of the things that 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 is as as we've seen in in this country over the last you know month or two. The, these these protests and people wanting to say Black Lives Matter and there's been some controversy over that. Um, you know, what is it okay? Uh, we, we've had this discussion even in our own family. Is it okay to say Black Lives Matter? Yeah, well, I understand. Maybe I mean, and especially Ben, your wife's black. You yes. know, and so you this means something to you beyond some technicality. Mm. You know, this 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 touches your life, and it I'm sure it has touched your life before these issues came up, yeah. before there ever was a Black Lives Matter uh, movement. Uh, yeah. it, it's just part of your life experience, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, part of what I've tried to do is practice what I've preached, you know, which I said be quick to listen and slow to speak. Yeah. Uh, we may think we, we understand everything when we don't, and we may need think we understand what people are trying to say when we may not. Yeah. And... And also, when I said we need to leave room, uh, what I meant was we need to leave room for people who do feel pain when the subject is raised for various reasons and don't come back with some sort of uh, quick answer, yeah. uh, trying to solve a problem that when they're really just discussing the things that hurt them. Going back to your statement that, well, of, yeah, of course, Black Lives Matter, the, the statement, yes, their lives matter like every other human being because we've said we're all made in the image of God. Uh, you know, the world doesn't all see it all that way per se. Where they establish value or where they posit value on human beings is not necessarily the same because we believe we're all made in the image of God. And really, the race was only divided uh, into the covenant people and those who are outside the covenant. And those were the only two uh, sort of divisions. So to say, do black lives matter? Yes, absolutely. But there's a difference between that idea which we should all embrace, you know, for biblical reasons, and uh, the movement associated with or an organization associated with a specific website. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. uh, I mean, there, uh, you can go and read it. I don't need to put words in their mouths. I mean, yeah. there they have a very clear, uh, detailed, uh, ideological statement of what they believe and what they stand for and what their goals are and their methodologies. 
And so Black Lives Matters, the website with its organization and all that stand, is rooted in feminism. And it stands for the promotion of other ideals just beside the equal treatment of people based on color. Yeah. It, you know, it, it stands to promote uh, transgenderism. It, it stands to promote abortion. It stands to uh, dis, disassemble the whole biblical view of the nuclear family. Yeah. Uh, they're abolitionists. You can read there. I'm not putting words in the mouth. They believe in, in the need to... Uh, to tear down uh, prisons and police force, you know, activities and actions and ideals and ideologies that are incompatible with the Christian worldview. Now, put all that, Ben, under the label social justice, and you yeah. can see that there's, there's a need to be discerning and distinguish here. You know, one of the things that, that, that we've talked about briefly, but... Um, it, is this concept of, you know, the field that you need to do something? Well, first of all, it's commendable to want to, to not just want to theorize, right? Yeah. I mean, the Christian life is taking truth and applying it. We can't just be content with being right. It's, it's not enough to be right. It's what do we do with what we know. Mm. Uh, so so that, that's important. I, and I would never want to throw water on that and, and let that flame burn. Uh, we were called to to make a difference in, in our culture to some degree. You know, different Christians have different views of how much we should get involved and so forth. Uh, so I don't, I don't want to discourage that at all. We're back, though, here to the idea of discernment. Uh, if you're going to jump Wisdom. in the boat labeled social justice, you, you got to know who's in the boat. Yeah. And when you, when you do that, you understand that you, your energies may be co-opted towards to promote something that the Christian worldview is utterly opposed to, that God, the God you serve, is, is utterly opposed to yeah. some of those things. So the problem is, I think, you know, some people want easy answers. They just want easy answers to questions that are nuanced. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they just tell me yes, tell me no. Uh, tell me tell me right, tell me wrong, you know. And, and some of these matters, they're not that way. Mm -hmm. uh, it requires wisdom, you know. The, the idea that we're supposed to be in the world, but not of the world. Uh, we've heard that before. Yeah. And that's a, 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 a Christian truism. It's based in Scripture. But when and how? I mean, so for example, see where the parallels exist and then where do we... Uh, you know, where do we defer? Where do we start moving off? So okay. if I were to ask you, Ben, as a Christian, you respond as a Christian, I say, should we as Christians care? And I'll use a different issue right now just to make it easier. It, it, should we as Christians care about the impoverished, the homeless? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Uh, now, now answer is an unbelieving progressive. Well, certainly. Okay. Uh, okay. Should yeah. we care about the the impoverished and the homeless? Yes, it's our duty to the human race. Okay. So hey, hey, we're in the same boat. That's yeah. interesting. Now, oh, why should we care, Ben, the Christian? Why should we care for the impoverished and, and the homeless? Uh, well, I mean, our 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 Lord calls us to to care for those, um, you know, for the least of these, as as it were. We we can read from you know Galatians six that we're to care for those who are in need, especially in those of the yeah, house. Yeah, do of good faith. towards all men, exactly. especially those in the household of faith. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Well, no, absolutely, those things are there. Now, Ben, uh, Ben, the uh, unregenerate uh, progressive. Why yeah. should we care for the impoverished and the homeless? To put yourself in their frame of mind. Yeah, I, know. I know. I'm sorry. That's, I'm that's this okay. Out you know, because um, they are just as equal as we are, and so they need to have the uh, equal outcomes of life. Um, you know, they, uh, you know, they they can't be just mistreated um, because of I don't know, uh, you know, their inability to get a particular job or something like that. Okay, I'm sorry I pressed you to make you That's think right. outside yeah. of your realm. And, and, and there are others, yeah. to be honest, you know, just let's be honest, I'm making them do this. There would be others who may add more details to that who yeah. really come from that point of view. Certainly. And we're not trying to simplify that, but yeah. it's just how it comes out. But now the next question mm -hmm. uh, is, is how, Ben? How, yeah. as the Christian, do we care for the impoverished and the homeless well, I mean, I, w I would think of a, a couple things. First of all, uh, recognizing our, 
our, our, um, our co-brokenness as, as, as humans, right? So we're all made in the image of God, but we're also all fallen. So we're not coming at them with a superiority complex saying, you're down, I'm not, let me fix you. Okay, so you're talking about the manner now, exactly. our attitude. Okay. The manner, the attitude. And then as we seek to restore them, there's some relief. We, uh, we apply some relief to their situation, but we're also working to help restore maybe broken patterns of, of finances or thinking or anything like that, and then hope to see them developed into um, into reaching out in, even into their own community as a whole person again uh, reaching and and growing not just staying where they're at okay so empowering them and, and uh, okay. now bend the unregenerate to progressive mm-hmm. how do we uh, is there going to be parallels there or are there going to be some differences here I think there would be some parallels but a lot of the answers I would it would seem are, are to provide uh, more programs that would, um, and I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be intellectually fair, so I don't want to just, you know, yeah. you know, thrash all, all those who, who have a, a liberal uh, idea. But, you know, so, someone who wants to um, establish government programs to establish justice and equality uh, of uh, fiscally, whether it's um, larger, larger tax burdens, uh, and then the redistribution of that to, to those who don't have as much, to other programs such as housing programs, free housing, um, uh, such as uh, is going on in San Francisco, hotels, things like that. Okay, so you're getting into the politics of it as well. Yeah. In other words, you're looking for structural solutions uh, yes. that come from society. And Christians can get involved in that, again, to a degree. Uh, and, and Christians have historically, mm-hmm. Reformed Christians have, have, have been involved in the abolition of slavery and so yeah. forth. So, yes, we there, there, there's some answers are, are parallel, but there is a difference between the liberty of conscience and generosity. You're being able to mm-hmm. be generous and now let's step it up politically and, and the you know government enforce yeah. equal distribution of wealth and so forth. Mm-hmm. Now we're getting into other sorts of ideals. And there's something beyond that. Uh, how some of these... Uh, in, uh, groups are seeking to resolve these problems are by linking all these together. Okay, not just the poor, not just the uh, you know the impoverished and the homeless, but as I just said, the the LGBTQ movement, uh, the abortion movement, the uh, the abolition abolitionists uh, uh, regarding to uh, police, defunding police. Mm-hmm. Uh, or just completely removing police. If we link all these things together, we get more political power, we get more yeah. political strength, we get... And, and so now, you're a Christian and you're involved with one item in there because you can. It's biblically sound for you, but you're, you're connected to all these other things that are seeking uh, to, to remain linked so they can achieve a certain amount of political power. Mm. And there's a danger in that. And uh, so part of it is, is, is being discerning there, Ben, when we're talking about getting involved yeah yeah but how and with whom and what is it that you may be uh, actually promoting yeah let me just say this ben uh, i think with this topic then of social justice i think with the language of it i, I think the church would be much better off if we simply just use uh, biblical terminology hmm. uh, because of the confusion related to that term and and, and that whole basket of what's in there and and, and so forth uh, that way there's less category confusion i think if we if we're speaking of loving neighbor uh, we're speaking of being salt and light in the world and then we individualize the 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 particular specific issues i think that takes some of the heat down if we would just do that but that's just my way of approaching it i, I would probably just stay away from that term one of the things that I've um, observed in, on social media is, is this idea of, of not getting the gospel or that, that, like, for example, race in the United States and the issue of race is a gospel issue. Uh, some folks have, have uh, and I'm paraphrasing, but they've they said if you don't get the idea of, of, of ethnic reconciliation, of of so, uh, of addressing these these procedure not structural inequalities mm-hmm. then you don't get the gospel mm-hmm. and and one of the things i i see in that is i is is that seems to put a a, a weight maybe it's well intentioned mm-hmm. but it it puts a weight on well do i really understand the gospel yeah and so when it comes to this idea of a gospel issue can you help us understand that maybe a little bit better 
Well, I mean, I give you my thoughts on that. I've seen the very same thing that that you're talking about. But this this idea of leverage goes both ways. We have to be careful how we talk to one another, how we communicate, how we seek to promote what we think is good and what God desires. Mm-hmm. Right? That we can be very polemical about it. We could be undermining. We could be hurtful. Or we can be helpful in 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 how we communicate. So just before I go right into that gospel issue question is one of the leverage examples going back to the black lives movement matter there Mm -hmm. is that we shouldn't assume that everybody who does say that that race matters to me and a a desire for equality and things being corrected that that means they've now embraced everything the black lives movement website is promoting Mm -hmm. there's probably a whole great number of people who have never even gone to that website have no understanding of it but they should know that this was going on so on the one hand we can't leverage people by immediately um, assuming that they oppose all that God opposes in regards to justice because they don't want to jump on this bank bandwagon, you know, or jump in this boat because they have looked at the website. Mm-hmm. And, and, and the flip side on the other side is that you can't assume that everyone who wants to see some change is embracing the promotion of all these other ideals, but we should be informed. Then you have this matter of labeling something a gospel issue. You, you know, just like just like social justice, that's a gospel issue is is not a biblical phrase. But the closest we get to it is something like in Galatians, where Paul says that Peter he told Peter, "You're not walking in step with the gospel," because he went he he went back towards the Judaizers when they came into town, and that threatened the gospel. Uh, so yeah, I, I, that's about the closest maybe Scripture gets to gospel issue. And, and so people use it, authors use it, and what they mean by it, just like social justice, is, is, seems to be different things. But I, roughly, I would put it into, into two different categories and, and begin to think about it. I specifically tend to use the phrase in only, in only one way. I put it this way. The, the problem is that if some people use gospel issue to establish the, the relative priority of something, if it's a gospel issue, what would you guess? It has to do with the gospel. It has it's to do high with priority. salvation, justification by okay. faith alone. High priority. High right? priority. High yeah. priority. Uh, it's not a gospel issue. Ah, secondary, right? Yeah. Uh, second tier, third tier, the things that Christians disagree. Mm. Uh, okay, well, maybe th- is that what they mean? Uh, but problem with with just using it and connecting things to it is that just about anything can connect to the gospel by way of application yeah. because the gospel affects how I view all of life, you know? So I use a lot, a lot more narrow uh, definition uh, of, of gospel issue. Uh, the gospel is, first of all, I, I would start by defining that. The gospel is the good news of what God has done, what God has finished, mm. you know, for us. And a gospel issue would be anything that undermines that potentially. That is, you know, without which I'm not justified. I'm not forgiven. I don't belong to Christ. I am condemned. That, to me, is a gospel issue. For others, anything that may, that may make the gospel look bad is a gospel issue. Well, then in my Christian life, my sanctification, everything is a gospel issue. Because I yeah. could, you know, right, Ben? I mean, I could, yeah. I, I could be impatient. Yeah. And, and someone says, you're a Christian? Uh, that's a gospel issue, my, my, my patience. Well, yeah, in a secondary way, mm-hmm. maybe. Uh, so that, that's part of the problem here. Secondly, is, is, is just the whole idea, the methodology that I'm going to use this as a way of beating somebody up. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, in, in, in life, in the Christian life, with the application of the gospel, and not the done, but in the do of the Christian life, right? There are other secondary things that are not having to do with the do, right? Like, let's say, end times views, mm-hmm. right? Christians defer, do they not, Ben? Oh, yes. Have you met Christians that believe that that an, their particular view is an essential? Oh, certainly. Absolutely. And yeah. so they might call it a gospel issue. And I would say, yeah. so if I don't agree with your your view of the millennium, I am, I, I'm not justified. I'm not forgiven because it's a gospel issue. Uh, some people could essentially go that far. Mm-hmm. But not everything in, that's in this whole gospel issue discussion is, is, is theology. It's also practice. Right? Yeah. So the Christian life in sanctification. So in Christian sanctification, there is, uh, you can do this. Let's call that level one. You're free to do this, Ben. Yeah. You're free to get involved in this. Uh, you're free to, 
say this is something that concerns you in society. You're free to care for the poor uh, in this manner and that way. That's one thing. Beyond you can, uh, there's you ought. Okay, Ben, you ought to care for the poor. Would you agree with that? You ought to care for the poor? Uh, I think it maybe at some level, yeah. Yeah, okay, so you ought. All right, I get that. Uh, you must. Does that sound like it has more force? Yeah. Okay. A little bit almost like it's tied to if, if, I'm, if I'm disobeying that, then there's a, a much larger issue. I'm disobeying my Lord. Okay, I'm, so yeah. well, we'll look at it this way. Yeah. Uh, we, justification and sanctification, progressive yeah. sanctification, yeah. are two distinct things, mm -hmm. but they can never be disconnected. So I get that the way you live the Christian life will reflect on whether or not you really are a Christian yeah. because these two things come connected and, and we teach that. But they are two different distinct things. And in my Christian walk with God, there is the you can mm -hmm. and then there is the you ought. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the things that you're talking about, when you say they use this label, that's a gospel issue. If you don't get it, you don't get the gospel. You're now moving into you must. And I think even I'm reading some going beyond that you must in this way. You hinted that. So yeah. it's not only an obligation, but an obligation with particular application. And gotcha. at that point, for me, you're way, you're way past uh, how we, you know, how do we encourage one another, motivate one another into love and good deeds. Yeah. It, it, it's not by uh, guilting people, yeah. shaming people. It's, it's in some ways, some Christians are actually absorbing this whole cancel culture methodology. Mm -hmm. They criticize it, yeah. and then they themselves do it. When they say, unless you show up here at 4 p.m., you know, then your silence makes you guilty. Yeah. That's interesting. I was busy at 4 p.m., you yeah. know. I have other things in my life. Yeah. And Christians have a, a liberty of conscience to make those decisions, you know. And that's what makes some of these, navigating some of these things hard for churches. You know, we have six elders here, right? Uh, some of these matters are not gospel issues. Mm -hmm. A lot of them aren't. Yeah. They're into, is this a can, ought, must. And so when you try to come together to a unified uh, decision based on conscience, it, that's tough because you have different consciences. Mm -hmm. And we're told to respect each other's conscience. Yeah. Yep. And so that yeah. gets difficult, Ben. Yeah. Okay. You know, one of the things I was, I was thinking about with, with, with our elders is you, you're also, you can't be experts in all of these various fields. <laughs> Thank you, know, you I mean, Ben. Well, that's important. I mean, I, you know, frankly, do I want someone who's an expert in in every aspect of human trafficking up here at the pulpit teaching me the Word of God? Or do I want someone who knows my soul, yeah. who wants to apply the Word of God to my soul and has de devoted his time or, or, or has devoted their time to, yeah. to shepherding? I think that's something that we, you know, I, I just, I was just thinking about this for hopefully for myself at some point, but, but w w for you guys as, as elders, to, we don't put you on this pest pedestal where you have to be the expert in every single field. Instead, you, it gives some charity there, especially charity for, for growth and understanding of how do we apply the scriptures. You don't need an answer just like that. Well, I mean, you're, you're not an elder. You're, you're in the process. Yeah. You've been, you, I think you appreciate this because you're in ministry. I mean, elder oh, or not yeah. is what yes. I mean. You feel that, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and you have a, you have, you're a multitasker at this church, right? So you wear hats in media, IT, mission, and then you disciple, you teach, you lead a community group. And it is hard to balance all those things. Under COVID, it's been a whole different thing, you know, oh, yeah. so that's affected. But I know you're right in what you're saying. You know, suddenly, uh, every, everyone's supposed to be critical race theory experts, you know, intersectionality mm -hmm. experts, you know, we're supposed to be policing method experts, you know, which involves degrees in sociology and police, policing methods. We're supposed to be experts at statistics and how uh, these things work. I'm sorry, you know, I just say this to everyone. You watch three YouTube videos and read two blogs. You're not an expert on a virus. You're not an expert on policing methods. Okay. You're not an expert on these different sociological sort of methodologies that have been going on for decades here yeah. and beyond in our culture. You know, so uh, the, we're back to the be quick to listen and slow to speak. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what I think we've tried to do yeah. is, is be careful. 
Yeah. And because on the one hand, you don't want the culture, once again, seeing the church as being absolutely disconnected, not caring at all Mm -hmm. about real issues. On the other hand, we can't be co-opted and say, I got to pick and choose because this one here and all this and the way you're tying them all together to seek power is something that God's opposed to. So, yeah. uh, and then yeah, of course, then there's all these background issues you're talking about, yeah. which we, you know, not everyone has the time. That, that's a good, it's a good question. And it, and to, to that end, something I've been talking with the elders about was replacing these grace life con- uh, conferences that we haven't been able to have this year. Uh, because of COVID and all the restrictions with some sort of webinars in which I'm inviting uh, specialists uh, Mm -hmm. who have devoted more than three YouTube videos and and two blog entries, you know, to a certain field of thought and questions that are that are coming at everybody really rapidly. So I'm working on that. Nothing solid yet to say, but something Mm -hmm. pretty soon, pretty soon, I hope. And and along those lines, Ben, you know, this gets emotional for people. It, it, it's probably been emotional for you on some level, you know, just, yeah. and I think sometimes in our, in our, in our rush to find solutions, uh, we, 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 we cross our wires sometimes. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm, I'm sort of changing the subject here a little bit, but then we're talking about reactions a little bit. So, uh, and what I mean is you, you watch, you watch a news feed from wherever you watch it, wherever it's coming from, and it's about people burning down things and tearing down statues, right? And, and, and hurling things at police and taking shots at police. And, you're, and then the next thing you hear is from some Christian thinker over here that we need to be merciful. And, and you, you're thinking, the last thing on my mind is mercy right now, what I just saw. But hey, time out. Yeah. What was he talking about when he said merciful? He, uh, uh, did he mean these people don't deserve justice for breaking the law. I don't, I don't think so. You need to th- slow down. Yeah. Slow down and, 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 and be deliberate. Uh, Which seems like it's harder in our culture. It's, one, we, we live in this Twitter microwave culture yeah. where our, our Facebook feed or our Instagram feed or our, our Twitter feed are just, it, we have, you feel like you have to respond immediately. Yeah. And, and on top of that, we, we have this, our own, our own impatience yeah. at wanting to find these answers. Mm-hmm. I, I think in some ways it's right because we see a problem and want to see it fixed. Yeah. But it's that lack of patience mm-hmm. that, that, that really we struggle with. I struggle with it, yeah. with wanting to see an answer right now. What are my elders going to do about yeah. this? Or how are they going to say this? And, yeah. and for, to, to really rest and to, in some ways, to say, to, to even to tell myself, chill. Yeah. Right? You know, I mean, I, I, I say this all the time. I say Psalm 2. I can see the nations raging, mm-hmm. and yet Jesus is, is installed on his throne. He's mm-hmm. there. Yeah. I don't have, and I have to repeat that. But And by that, we, you don't mean don't respond at all. No, not at no, all. No, no. We're, we're talking about understanding balance and when to speak, when to say what you need to say, exactly. what ought to be said, what ought not to be yeah. said. And I usually find that when I respond quickly, yeah, that's where I hurt the most people. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes even brothers and sisters, that's very I end true. up having to apologize and say I'm sorry. I I spouted off, and that really wasn't a yeah. that wasn't a helpful thing. Yeah, well, I get it. You know, we we learned from Scripture when we went through Ephesians. We talk about the fact that anger is a, is something God's given us. So it's, it's you know, and anxiety. We said there's a righteous anxiety when we went through Philippians that the the it's knowing something's wrong in your world, and therefore use that energy now to solve it in a godly way. Uh, sometimes it just gets the better of us. And I get that some people feel really threatened and then COVID, you know, shut down, shelter in place just accentuates it. It's like a perfect storm. And for some people, it's more they can handle. There's been a, just a massive uptick in suicides in our country. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and those of us that, uh, that we need fellowship to, to face life together. We're designed for relationships. And as the church, we're built for it even more so. Uh, the, the multiplicity of gifts. I think we're all feeling the lack of that and, yeah. and we're hurting for some of it and some of us are trying ways to, to get back at that. Just keep trying. Get back at it. Slow yeah. down. Listen carefully. Pray. Be quick to listen. Slow to speak. And uh, we'll keep moving forward on these matters, Ben, trying to, uh, yeah. trying to see them, navigate them in a biblical way, yeah. which involves both. involves, like you said, chill out, step back, but also involves, you know, respond. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, another thing that might help people is going back to the t- 
topic of the relationship of Christ and culture, that is the church and empire in terms of uh, affecting the culture. Uh, I mentioned twice now, I think, uh, the, the two kingdom view, uh, and th that's the majority view for, for us as Reformed Christians, uh, although it's not the, the, the end all. And I did a message in John, the Gospel of John, I think it was 2015, John 19, 11, and I talked there about Christ's two kingdoms, and I followed it up with an article on the two kingdoms because of this very discussion then. This, we started this back in 2015. Uh, I mm -hmm. think what I'd like to do is uh, I'm up for the next newsletter article here, so I think I'll be revisiting that article that I put out in, in 2015. But some, some of our church members may yeah. benefit from going to listen to the sermon right. on John 19, 11, which you and your crew captured and I believe, I hope, is still there for people to get. Yeah, we definitely hope so. No, it, it, we'll we'll include links for uh, the messages that Tony's referencing. Uh, we'll include that in the description uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, and also we'll have included those links in the email uh, that you received as a member, a regular attender of Grace Bible Church. You'll see that in the email itself. Yeah. Well, I think that's a good kind of a note to to end okay. uh, this conversation on. Um, uh, what I'd like to do is just family. I'd like to get your feedback. You can email me. I'm going to put the email on the screen. How did this work as far as uh, a pastor cast? Is this something that was beneficial to you? Uh, you know, what'd you think? So feel free to send me an email. We might be doing something like this. Like I said before, this is a a this is an experiment. So Tony, thank you for experimenting. Yes, I'm glad to. Yeah, <laughs> this with me. Yeah. I'm super. I, again, I'm sure it's better to talk to me than to talk to a you know. It is. Camera. It is. Although yeah. I, can, I gotta believe you're getting kind of tired of my face. No, know? no, I'm not. Uh, you keep shaving <laughs> and changing your face, so that's good. That's helpful. <laughs> so Tony, I do have one burning question. Yes, go ahead. Which is is very important given the times in which we live. Are we ever going to see Tony Sinelli shred a guitar solo <laughs> live <laughs> again? Live again. Uh, I don't know. I was hoping to do that in our 25th anniversary, but God only knows now what's going to happen with that. <laughs> All right. Well, very good. Well, family, we're going to kind of call it right there. If uh, Again, if you have any questions or if you need any help, we want to encourage you to contact us at the church office. You can see the number, on again, on the bottom of the video. You'll also see some information at the end of, the, of, the, of, the, of this video. Uh, again, thank you so much for paying attention and, and joining with us, and uh, we'll see you next week. God bless you.